<laughs> this is the world's first 3D printed metal Lego lightsaber. <laughs> Well, there you are, of course. Welcome back to 3D Printing Nerd Studios, of course, proudly powered by PCBWay. I just finished this project and I couldn't wait to hit record and tell you all about how this happened and how, of course, PCBWay is part of the reason why it occurred. A while back, I saw that Matt Denton made a video about a 3D printed Lego lightsaber. And he talked about the electronics that went into it. And in his wonderful voice, he talked about the joys of it. But that's pretty cool. And I was like, I want that. Well, thanks to PCBWay, who of course can give you 8% off on your order. If you go to the link in the description and use code 3DPN, they're not just PCBs. They also 3D print. 3D print things like metal. So the stage was set. I was going to make the world's first 3D printed metal Lego lightsaber. To begin, the parts were sent off to PCB Way for 3D printing. And the metals that were used, uh, 316L stainless steel. We've got uh, tool steel or high-speed steel. We've got aluminum or aluminum, however you want to say it. And then finally, titanium. When I got all the parts, I took a look at them and they just look fantastic. I love, love the look of 3D printed metal parts. They look so cool and they just, they feel so unique. It was amazing to hold them in my hands for the very first time. Now this originally was a project meant for 3D printing in a plastic polymer, not necessarily in high-speed steel or aluminum or titanium or stainless, what have you. And so certain considerations had to be made. Certain mitigations had to be made. And one of them was tapping the material. In the 3D printed part uh, on the end here, two screws go in and tap the plastic material. And by that, I mean the screws go into the plastic and the threads in the screw grind into the sidewalls of that plastic hole and that's tapping the hole. Now you can do that with a plastic piece, but when we talk about having to tap high-speed steel, that's just not gonna be as easy. I do hope he doesn't try anything foolish. So of course, I wanted to try and do this myself and I, I have some taps. So I set about trying to tap the high-speed steel. And I went about and got a nice drill bit to drill it out to a certain size. And that seemed to go okay. So I, I had some confidence going in. And then I loaded a tap into my drill and I went slowly and I broke the tap. You probably saw this coming, but never fear. I was able to back that out and I had another tap of the same or similar size. So I thought, all right, let's do it by hand. Let's use a hand method of slowly tapping. And I would, I would move it forward a bit and then back it off and then move it forward and then back it off, move it forward. And then that broke too. Dang it. And that broke in a way that didn't allow me to back out the broken tap. And so I was quite sad at this point. <laughs> I reached out to a local machine shop and I asked if they could help. Shout out to Nate at Squires Machines because he helped me out. And I asked Nate to give me just a little bit about what he did. And here's what Nate said. I milled it out with an eighth inch carbide end mill on a Bridgeport machine drilled it with a number 29 drill, tapped it to 832, turned down the head on some screws to fit to your countersunk holes. Well, Nate, you're just 10 shades of wonderful. And sure enough, it worked. The price that Nate quoted me to have this done, $40 and a six pack of Pepsi. That's a deal. Also, huge shout out to my wife who went to the machine shop and picked this up for me while I was away on an adventure. So now it was time to solder up the electrical parts. And I got these from Adafruit, from DigiKey, and from Amazon. The list is a Trinket M0, a LiPo battery and backpack, a speaker amplifier, SOT23 carrier, a NeoPixel strip, a simple little switch, 
some PicoBlade cables, an FET transistor, a 330 ohm resistor, and an acrylic tube. So many tiny little parts. Thankfully, Matt has a nice little wiring diagram in the video at his GitHub, and that helped a lot. And this led me to my soldering iron and some silicone wires that I'd been missing for a while and found. And I actually got to buy some heat shrink tubing. I can't believe I didn't have any heat shrink tubing on hand. I think I did it. That's a blinking light. Once it was all soldered together, I had it on the bench. And I went and tested it. Yes! It worked. With the soldering out of the way, it was time to assemble the metal parts. And assembling the metal parts is a little bit different because again, we're, we're dealing with geometries that were gonna be made and assembled using a plastic polymer rather than a metal. So while cyanoacrylate glue will work with the plastic parts or 3D glue will work with the plastic parts, for metals, I went with JB Weld. JB Weld, great, great epoxy, four to six hour set time Full cure, 15 to 24 hours, depending on your temperature. So with four to six hours to set, that gave me plenty of working time to get all of the pieces where they needed to be. For the rings around here, I actually utilized some blue tape to hold them in place because one is brought in from the top, one is brought in from the bottom, and you didn't want to lay it on it or whatever. So if I taped them together in place, they, they held each other in place and, and it worked. Once everything was properly JB welded and taped, I took it into the print farm where it's a little bit warmer and I just left it overnight to cure. The next day, it was time to put everything together and another consideration when using 3D printed metal parts rather than the polymer plastic parts is when utilizing electrical components because plastic is not conductive. Metal sure is. So to mitigate the electrical parts touching metal and possibly grounding themselves or shorting out, I utilized a combination of the heat shrink tubing and black electrical tape to isolate all of the connections and insulate them from the metal saber. So in using the heat shrink and the black electrical tape, just fitting everything inside of here was quite a chore. I mean, I did, but it took a lot of work to make that happen and there were some times where I did have to pull the stuff out again to re-solder connections just because they had been pulled on a little bit too hard and yeah I was able to mitigate it but at a little bit of a cost. Oh and the acrylic tube um, I cut this to size and uh, I forgot to hit record there you go and this black electrical tape you see right here this was to snug the fit of the acrylic tube into the metal top part. And so that way I can wave it around like a crazy person. I mean, <clears throat> like a Jedi and not have the tube fall off. And boom, just like that. It is done. Paper in the tube, black electrical tape here, a titanium button right here that isn't necessarily glued onto the switch because if I need to take the switch out, I don't want to have to break a glue connection. Holy cow, like, wow, wow, pew, 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 wow, wow, wow. In choosing to do this with metal, yes, it's friggin' cool, but also it presents a unique set of circumstances that have to be mitigated when the original intended material is a polymer plastic rather than a metal. When it's challenging AF, like, these are some of the things that you have to remember. I also didn't even talk about it, but the Trinket M0 has to be loaded with a special program that Matt wrote to make all of the lights do this and the sounds do this. And thank goodness I remembered how to use the Arduino IDE. I did a project a long, long, long time ago where I made a Daft Punk helmet and I have some NeoPixel LEDs for the eyes and I used the Arduino IDE in order to make them do cool things. But that was a long time ago and I forgot. These aren't the droids you're looking for. 
But thankfully, thankfully, I was able to remember. So on a computer, I installed the Arduino IDE and I loaded up the INO file, which is the project file that Matt created. And I was able to install the dependencies that were needed. And I was able to copy over the specific library that Matt Denton used into my home library on my computer for the Arduino IDE. And then I verified, compiled, and sent it to the Trinket M0. It just worked, but it was only easy because I had done it before. Uh, tiny parts and tiny wires are very, very difficult to solder with ease. That FET transistor, it's so flipping tiny, but I did it. And I don't want you to be afraid of challenging projects like this. Try it, you might actually get it done. And when we're dealing with the metal parts, when the original intended part was going to be a polymer plastic, Obviously, space concerns are there when we have to add heat shrink and we have to add black tape in order to insulate the electrical components from the metal of the saber because you don't want things to short out. And again, one of those things that you, you have to adapt to. And for me, some of it was using the black tape because the heat shrink walls are thicker than the black tape. And so the, the black electrical tape can actually fit into smaller spaces. When you first put things together, there's a lot of tricks that you get to find afterwards. You're like, oh, I can shorten it up here. Or, oh, look, I can combine these things. Or, oh, perhaps I can shrink, heat shrink these things together. So they just take up less space. And in doing that, I learned more about what I was trying to do. And really, if I were to do this again, I would do it differently, but only because I have the knowledge from doing it first here with all you. And, and last, but absolutely not least, PCBWay has been an amazing company to power my studio here. They've been so wonderful to work with. And when we talk about PCBWay, you think PCBs, but that's not the end of it. They do 3D printing there. They do 3D printing of polymer plastics and nylons, but also really cool metals, 316L stainless steel, titanium, aluminum, and tool steel. How cool is that? They supported this project with glee, with joy in their hearts. And I'm so thankful to have them on board. And I really hope you go and click that link in the description and utilize the code 3DPN to get you 8% off your order. It's a heck of a deal. Like it's free money. I am just, so excited about this. I can't believe this actually works. I'm so happy about it. You might be thinking to yourself, you've got this saber and you, you can't hold it all day. You want to, but you can't. What do you do? That's where this comes in. This is a 3D printed holder for the saber yellow polymer plastic on my Prusa Mark IV, high five blue polymer plastic on my X1 Carbon. You put that into that, you can always glue it or gloop it if you want, but then just like that. And just like that, we've come to the conclusion and I couldn't be happier. Thanks for making this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, savor all the things. And as always, high five.